Hi, welcome to Nikki's vlog and today the weaker sex. Um, for the for the past 12 months obviously I've been you know presenting as female when I'm running my coaching and running my training courses and um, you know working um, and so I uh, usually start my sessions off with a kind of frank you know chat about the pink elephant in the room that the fact that you're going to be trapped in this room for the next two days with a tranny um, and I thought I would share that because uh, a couple of people have asked me to share how I start those sessions off um, and I started off by uh, observing that Western society is probably 3,000 years old and for 2,900 of it it was ruled uh, by the brute and um, that we expected men to be providers and protectors and you know in a thousand years ago you know when we had to go and fight for food and fight to defend the village you know this is what sat at the top of the table because that brute strength and that um, you know physical strength and that aggression is what kept us going uh, as a society. Uh, you know post-industrial revolution I don't need to be that strong and that fit and that aggressive to be able to open the cellophane and take the steak out of the wrapper and I can always call the police if somebody's trying to steal something and so I don't need to be physically strong in order to sit at the head of the table um, and manage the family or manage the business or run the world and so I think there's been a big shift away from this towards this in the last hundred years but it takes more than 100 years to develop our language. So all of our idioms and all of our metaphors and all of our linguistic tools are all catching up and not catching up quick enough. So we still say things like, she wears the trousers in that relationship, or she's got balls, big balls, as if, you know, really it takes balls to have courage and you can't have courage without them. And we still dress little boys in blue t-shirts that say hero and little girls in pink t-shirts that say I want to be a princess. And so we need to change those narratives. And our perception is still that the head of the table is male. So here's one of the tricks that I like to do. Uh, I googled, in this case, board meetings. Um, and the interesting thing about this, there's some photographs that are repeated, you know, but I counted the number of men and the number of women uh, on each of the photographs. The ones that haven't got numbers are the ones that the photograph is repeated. Um, and then kind of sum those up collectively. And what we find, undoubtedly, 57 men in those photographs, 30 second, 36 women in those photographs. And I think the reason why there's 36, because that's not representative of the boardrooms at all. That's, you know, it's much more like 57 to 3. Um, but the reason I think that is because people are trying to show a gender balance in their photography in their, in their stock items. But even given they're trying to show it, it's still out horrendously. Perhaps the most interesting one for me was the second photograph there, which is this one. There are 18 people around this boardroom table, and I think uh, three of them are female. And so you know, that's a horrendous um, proportion. But what's really interesting for me is the head of the table. Maybe this is the head of the table, but they're both men, both straight white men. Um, well, we don't know they're straight, but they are at least white men. And they're at the head of the table, and therefore that's the power position, and that's where they tend to sit. And the other thing I think is interesting is this, you've got two people here, or three of them, I guess, who are demonstrating very classic male behavior. They're under threat, and so what do they do? They stand up, they step forward, and they deploy their aggression and their sense and their size in order to win an argument. And everybody else is going to back down and give up because, you know, there's no point. And I think that's very indicative of the behaviours that you see in a boardroom right now. And so I think we need to change that. And if we don't change that, we're in for difficult times. The day of the brute has gone. What we need now are people who are smart, intelligent, collaborative, nurturing to our boards. And so we need to stop admiring the head of the table who's got the big fist and start to admire the head of the table who's smart and going to look after everybody and get us all there. That's what started my journey. I did not want to be daddy. I wanted to be mummy. I am mummy at my business. My job as the CEO is to make my people successful. It is not to shout at them for getting it wrong. They need to go out, make mistakes, mess it up. And when they're in the real difficulty, call mummy and I'll come and fix it and get them out the shit and bring them home and sort the client out because my job is to look after them and make them successful. Be mummy, not daddy. And rethink your approach to gender if you want to succeed. And I feel passionate about it because 
I'm at standing. There's another blog about that. That's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. Please, hashtag Nikki Take slash Nikki Jig or Google the corporate drag queen and I come out in nine out of ten places. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.